Hello everyone, I'm Dennis and this is Nick. Hello. Uh, this is Nick's channel, Console Hunter, uh, a YouTuber from Greece, uh, in which uh, he presents various uh, exotic pieces of gaming history and games and consoles. He visits various uh, collectors and displays uh, their collections. Uh, Nick, tell us a few things about yourself and uh, your channel. Okay, yes, my channel uh, is counting about two years. Uh, recently, I reached the two years lifespan of my channel. I am focused uh, most at collectors and their collections or visiting stores. Because, you know, when I was a kid, I always wanted to own everything of the... Yes, we all wanted to own everything. <laughs> ...of the video gaming uh, market. Uh, so, because it was uh, very difficult to to own every piece of, of every brand. You know, 90s, uh, it was a, a period where a lot of brands with a lot of products launching every five, six months, etc. There was an explosion of video games in e the 90s. Exactly. It was a huge market where all the kids suddenly they had uh, to to choose between a lot of brands and machines or consoles. Uh, back then in 80s or 70s, the market wasn't too great. Exactly. You know? So, as a kid, I had a lot of uh, dreams about uh, regarding to obtain all these consoles. And now, as an adult, you know, with more uh, money <laughs> from my well, job, we have our income now. Yeah, okay. I tried uh, and I managed to collect a lot of these consoles, some uh, common consoles, some exotic consoles, you know, all boxed, etc. Mm -hmm. But uh, the biggest achievement of my channel is, you know, to be. I want to focus to someone's collection and to learn their stories, their background stories as a kid, you know, to learn something new every visit. Yes, indeed, and you have visited many collectors here in Greece. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, I think um, we should mention this, there is a Greek uh, collector. Yeah, it's a, his name is Theos. He has a huge yeah. collection, it's probably one of the, his... They got one of the top 10 in the world. Uh, he pretty some, much yeah. has everything. Some people claim uh, through a database of uh, you know very big uh, retro video games collectors, he's among the top five worldwide. Top five. Oh, he's right. a Greek. He's a Greek so guy. that's definitely worth watching. Yeah. So we want to show you that in uh, our tiny Greece, uh, we have a lot of collectors regarding uh, retro video gaming. Yes, actually we do One have of a, them a strong you. community. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. Not that large, but uh, yes, thank you very much. You are a big uh, and very balanced good collector. Well, I was very lucky with this piece, to yeah. be honest with you. Uh, because this is a piece that I recently obtained. Um, it is a brand new, unused, in mint box condition. Uh, and everything is, you know, it's, it's just like it's unused. Yeah, yeah. Even on the over here on the purchasing date of the of the receipt of the um, registration, yeah. it shows that it was never sold. It was actually just left in stock somewhere of a, of a store that closed down. So um, I have to thank you for choosing to present your diamonds, a piece of gaming history in my living room for my channel. For I love your channel and I love the work <laughs> that you do. And I wish you good luck in this uh, international endeavor that you are uh, you uh, are beginning right now. Yeah, it's my first try, my friend. So be patient, and uh, probably I have also to sorry about interrupting you that uh, in the future I will do another video like this, a crossover video, one for the Greek audience and one for the international audience, regarding a very rare, exotic, brand new with sealed contents, wow. unused retro console. I don't want to spoil by now, but you company have to wait. Name. Do we have the company's name? At least? Say it. Say it. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, right. I have to, okay. to, to do the yes, from ninth the, advertisement. The yeah. advertisement. All right, so yeah. a Sega. A Sega. So we're going to see that soon. All right, great. Um, Let's talk about this magnificent piece right now. All right, now. well, you know, just a few words about the history of the Virtual Boy. Yeah. From some people who probably don't know exactly the story. The story begins from actually USA, not Japan, yeah. from Massachusetts. Uh, th the end of the 80s, early 90s, uh, a company called Reflection Technologies, mm -hmm. uh, they had invented and patented this technology of uh, using the LEDs, and that's why it's red. Yes. Uh, which would be reflecting onto moving mirrors uh, on two separate screens, one on the left and the right eye. It's eye individual. Giving the perception of depth and 3D. 
Although it was 2D. Although it was yeah. 2D. 2D stereoscopic uh, system, like yeah. the SNES, you know, it, the rotating yes. scaling system. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so uh, they pitched this idea, this technology, to various um, companies, uh, toys in the beginning. So they went to uh, uh, Mattel, to Lego. Uh, they liked the technology, but they didn't have much use for it. Yeah, so, uh, probably. <laughs> yes, so this company moved on. They thought of going to the video game uh, industry. They started off with Sega. Uh, Tom Kalinske wasn't really uh, fond of the idea into moving into this field. Yeah. Uh, and then they moved on to Nintendo mm -hmm. and they made a presentation to R to Team R&D 1. Yeah. Now, Nintendo is, is known to have uh, four teams, exactly. Uh, team 4, Miyamoto is the head of. Uh, and Team 1, uh, the head of Team One is the father of the Game Boy, who is and the game was in the on eighties. He was Gunpei Yokoi. Exactly. So Gunpei Yokoi, he saw this technology and he liked it. He he liked the idea of using this cheap technology with the yeah. LEDs yeah. and putting it into something you know new and making a good profit. But the bad thing was that they had a small time limit until 1996. Because what would happen in 1996? 1996, they wanted to launch their NIS-64 or codenamed Ultra-64, as we knew earlier. Uh, it was a very small amount of time to research exactly. two different consoles. Although Sega did a lot of mistakes, you know, in uh, 93, 94, yes. 95, with all, you know, the well-known Sega add-ons, etc. Uh, they rushed to... to to create, to think, to market, to brand, everything about this console. So the the small amount of time it was very crucial for its success. Where, Basically it was yeah. less than two years. So they had less two than years. two years to create something with that technology. Yeah, indeed. And um, what uh, was the best to do was uh, st still use the red LED because it was cheap. They didn't Cheaper. have time yeah. to, uh, to reinforce that with other colors, blue, green, whatever, and make it more beautiful yep. the, uh, aesthetically. So they kept the red. And um, there was some fear, of course, back in the day of what this technology could have onto the eye. Yeah, yeah. And that's why uh, they, uh, Nintendo hired uh, an independent organization to run some studies, which showed that, okay, it's not that dangerous for the eye, yeah. but it could have an impact onto the children's developing eyes so that's why there's a warning down in the corner that says advisory not to be used by children under seven years seven old. Years old yeah. And when we're gonna open this in a little bit, we're gonna see how there's so many disclaimers and warnings by the uh, law team. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't do very well with sales. The, do you remember the sales numbers? Yeah, it's 770,000 uh, pieces worldwide. Which is less than a million. Yeah, but I, we don't know exactly the precision numbers uh, upon the US market or the okay. Japanese market. But uh, I can say that it started uh, J July of uh, in, 1995 in Japan. Yes, exactly. Ju July and it 95. lasted only six months. So it didn't even make it to the end of the year. Yeah, wow. With only eight games released on Japan market and 14 in the US market. And uh, also the other side, uh, they restarted the launch production August of 95 until March of 96. Yes, that's about nine months. With a starting price. The starting <laughs> price was? $179. Yes. I think, yeah. And uh, it didn't do well. I mean, sales were very, very low. So that's why Nintendo had to reduce the price. Uh, it was a movement, a desperate movement. Also, the other brands do it with uh, their machines, you know, Dreamcast, Saturn. At the end of their lifespan, mm -hmm. they were, you know, the prices were going very low. So, but pretty much they had a discount. Like a couple months later, it was already twenty twenty dollars down, and just a few months later, it was half price, like ninety nine dollars. Yeah, yeah. And that was really low. So, which proves how <laughs> disappointing sales were. It's also uh, the the first uh, thirty two bit console of Nintendo. Yes, that's true. Uh, because Nintendo had Super Nintendo, which was sixteen. 1996, the Nintendo 64 was going to take a huge leap. <laughs> exactly. And what was it supposed to rival when it was uh, to be launched? PlayStation 1 and uh, Sega Saturn. What kind of... How could it compete with those two machines? No way. I mean, come on. It, yeah. it says it's portable, but really, it's not that portable. I mean, you're stuck behind those things, those goggles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, um, the father of 
the Game Boy and the Virtual Boy continuing the same line, because of its failure, he felt responsible and he left Nintendo. Yeah. Although he had he had brought so much success to Nintendo with all of his other previous um, uh, gaming machines, yeah. he left Nintendo and uh, he he fa he founded another company, his own company, uh, Kyoto. Uh, building the Wonder Swans, Bandai's, handheld, yeah, which Wonder was Swans. for Bandai, which did have a very huge success in Japan, not outside of Japan, it stayed in Japan only. And unfortunately, to complete his tragic story, a year later he died in a car accident. Unfortunately, in a car accident, yeah, I yes. remember that. I can go. So that's pretty much the story of the Virtual Boy. It, you know, it's a part of uh, the gaming history and Nintendo's history. Yeah. Uh, Nintendo 1996, of course, launched Nintendo 64. Mario 64 was, has had a huge success, and you know, so that's why it was a, a small, you know, bracket into the Nintendo history. And um, I'm very much excited to open this beauty. And it's uh, see. also the first time that we are, we are going to yes, go. Yes, <laughs> yes, we're going to see it for the first time. I can't wait to, you know, see and uh, touch and feel the brand new. Me too. Unused. Me too. All it's right. high time. So right. let's move on. Let's go. Okay, go. So now it's high time to unbox for f the very first time this rare gaming history. Yes, I can't Peace. wait. <laughs> Nick, I can't wait. Okay, so before too. we open it, let's just, you know, go around and see a few things around the box. Yeah, of course. Uh, over here in the corner, we see it says uh, high res resolution 3D graphics. Yeah. Uh, of course, we have the mentioning of, of it being a 32-bit system, mm -hmm. uh, which makes it the strongest console that Nintendo had in 1995. Back in time there, yeah. Yes. Uh, the digital stereo sound. Uh, here we have the eye advisory that we mentioned earlier, yes. that uh, it is for players seven years and older. Mm -hmm. uh, another little funny piece of history over here is the Duracell uh, advertisement. They had like, so, some sort of like a co collaboration over here. Yeah, it's really funny. Though. Yeah, because uh, you know you would pay one hundred and eighty dollars for this, and what did they tell you? Peel <laughs> off the sticker, lift here, and what do you save? One dollar. I mean, come on, this to is save one dollar. Ridiculous. Yes, that's. <laughs> That's really funny, uh, and also we we see over here that uh, it's included with one game, which was the Mario Tennis game. Mm -hmm. And uh, over here in, on the side, again, you know, repeating uh, the previous uh, uh, the the marketing uh, logos. Uh, something else that I that I forgot to mention over here is yes. look at this. Look at the difference between the red and the blue. You know what? I like that. Me too. It seems uh, similar to the, you know, uh, cinema of 90s with three glasses, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's red true. and blue. Yeah, it's so 90s. It's just screaming at you, telling you, you know, look at me. I'm here. I'm different. Uh, come and get me. And uh, let's say, let's uh, remind people that this is the American version. Yeah. Uh, this is the American box. The Japanese version is a pure black and just displaying the uh, Virtual Boy. Yeah, I'm going being, to pop an image about this. Okay, being more humble and uh, serious yeah. in the Japanese version. Mm -hmm. In the American version, it's just all screaming at you and telling you, come here and, you know, buy me. Buy me, yeah. So, uh, here in the, on, on the back side, uh, what do we get to see? Um, we see that, again, uh, Mario te Mario's Tennis is right in the middle. And, uh, we also have a mentioning of some games. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you, Nick. Yeah. Do you do you feel something different compared to the other uh, consoles that were out in the market concerning the display? L let me let me tell you. Mm -hmm. In all of the other consoles, you also you always have images of the games. Yeah. Screenshots. Back from exactly. the back from the NES yeah. and the and the Sega Master System. Here Very you true. don't have any <laughs> pictures. What do you have? Just the logos Just of the logo, games. Yeah. Why? I don't know. I, a, I think I know why. It's a bit... Uh, no, I, I really don't know. Tell me. <laughs> I think they were afraid to show them the graphics of it just being red and black. Oh, so people will be disappointed from the very first <laughs> I think. I think that's a reason. So we have Red Alarm over here, which is um, a wireframe game uh, like Star Fox. Okay. And actually, we have this game sealed. Uh, Teller Boxer, which is a boxing game. Um, Galactic Pinball, which is actually a very nice game, this uh, pinball game. Yeah. Here we have a mentioning of Warrior Cruise and it says coming soon. What's funny about this 
is that when it did come out, it wasn't called Water Cruise anymore. It was just called Waterland. Waterland, yeah. And in fact, it's one of the best Waterland games ever developed. Exactly. And it's a shame that it's stuck onto this console and never be released or remastered in any other version. Mm -hmm. Here we have Mario Clash, which is a continuation of the original uh, Mario Brothers. Um, back in the day with uh, Luigi and th throwing the Koopa Troopas through pipes. Mm -hmm. And uh, over here telling us that there's a proprietary uh, AC adapter for the Virtual Boy. Optional always, yes. as always. You know. <laughs> and of course over here we see included inside, it shows us uh, what the system looks like. Yeah. Another over here uh, warning back and down in the corner telling us that be careful, it's only for, for players seven years older. And I want to also, you know, Oh yes, of course. Let's. This is. So gay is this. Do not remove proof of purchase. <laughs> yes, exactly. So this is uh, very important because over here uh, it tells us that this is the guarantee, the warranty. So once you buy it, you have a maximum of ninety days to return it. Mm -hmm. And look at this, the date of purchase. It's empty. It's empty. You know why? Because never sold. Because <laughs> this unit was never sold, yeah. exactly. So that's another proof over here that this is a brand new, unused piece of history over here. Yeah, that's and why I wanted to show this uh, episode worldwide. <laughs> yes, exactly. So uh, I think we're ready. We're ready right? to open it. Yes. Okay, okay. So let me help you. Let's do this. It's uh, on the other side. It's on the other side, yes. And here we go. Wow, this is it. This whoa, is it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at this. Look over here, right, right off the bat. Get six free Duracell batteries. I mean, <laughs> come on. Again with a Duracell a collaboration over here. Uh, it's a bit funny still. I, I, I know, I know. So you register your console and you get six free batteries. And also from the sticker, $1 discount yeah. it's really funny because i i expected to see uh, you know the logo of nintendo or virtual boy or something like this and i see a duracell pro yes yes that's, <laughs> that's hysterical oh my god okay <laughs> here we are here we are all right so what are we starting off over With here the bundle game yes and let me remove it from its little baggie wow brand new extra mint New yes, condition. <laughs> so again, here we have the uh, continuing of the red and the blue on the back, on the top and bottom. Indeed. Yeah. And it looks like a Game Boy game, right? Of course. Same color, also same size. Mm -hmm. It's a little wider. The arrow, the pointing the arrow. arrow. <laughs> yes, pointing where, where to insert and how to insert. So uh, because you know it continues, as we said, the line of the Game Boys. Mm -hmm. And that's why it yeah, has the same. Yeah, we wanted to continue the, the yes. brand and also the stuff inside. So let's put that aside. Yes. Uh, what else have, do we have over here? Let's look. look at this. This is amazing. Wow, just the feel of it, right? Let me have a retro smell. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, Nick. Again, what do we see, what do we have over here? Again, for the third time, we can see a Duracell Come <laughs> leaflet on, inside. People. All right. Send this and get six free uh, batteries. All right, okay, so whatever. Whatever. Don't forget to fill it up later. Yes, of course, Claim I will fill it your out. free six batteries on Duracell of the US. Okay, so what do we have over here? We have the, uh, manual. the manual, very interesting, giving us the initial warnings. Also very similar to Game Boy manuals. Yeah, actually, I think it's even the same All, size. Uh, I, I think it's a bit shorter. Oh, okay, yeah. yes. But it's very similar. And here we have uh, Mario and Luigi with colors, because during the game, <laughs> they don't have colors. <laughs> the same. Yeah, so a very nice little manual over here. Uh, what else do we have? We have the... Uh, these are the ads for the Nintendo Power. Yes, of course, back in the day. Yes, they had these all over the place. They had these in the NES games, in the Super NES games, uh, um, in the Game Boy games. I really don't know that because, you know, in the European market or Greek market, we never had such a promo, you know, leaflets inside our games. We had similar, but you as a Greek American. Yes, where I you have the collection. New Jersey. I, yes, exactly. Yeah, yes. You know, all the I was in story. New Jersey during the <laughs> 80s, exactly, came to Greece. Uh, towards the end of the decade. So here we have a Virtual Boy, uh, you know, just precautions and whatever booklet. Okay, interesting stuff. And here we have qu 
quite a large instruction booklet. And very interesting, as I can see from the outlet. Yes. Uh, so basically, what, this should tell us how to set it up. Holy warnings! 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 warnings, warnings, warnings. warnings. <laughs> Four different warnings: repetitive strain and injury, um, epilepsy and seizures. This product must not be used by children under the age of seven. Jeez. Seven and one month years old is uh, okay, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, here it tells us yeah, the various yeah. components and uh, how to put it together. And we have the focus lighter, which we will see. We have the IPD interpupil distance dial, which is like the binoculars to bring closer or further away the sight. Okay. The description so, was quite funny. And here is uh, <laughs> the, yes. The positioning. Now here's the convenient uh, way a person should be playing this system. Okay. So quite awkward, uh, I must admit. Very interesting stuff. And are let's ready. Are, okay, I'm ready. Uh, <laughs> Nick, please. Thank you very much about giving me the first. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, it's the first touch of your console. I want um, you to hold the controller and tell me how does it feel? Like you know, describe yeah. it. It feels, it feels like brand new. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, the buttons rebound is ridiculously new. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's amazing, you know, the feeling. Mm -hmm. The grip uh, is very nice, but I can say that uh, it's not, uh, you know, it was not uh, for kids or very, ah, depending okay. their age. I think the grip is for, uh, for adults. Older, yeah. adults. Right. What about the feel? Uh, let me feel it too myself. Wow. Uh, it's kind of plastic, right? Like, yeah. It doesn't feel very sturdy. Yeah, the quality build uh, seems, you know, a bit cheaper than mm -hmm. uh, we used before from Nintendo. So, what about this? What, what's this? Double directional parts. That was the first time ever. I mean, yeah. I can't. No, no other <laughs> controller had that before. That yeah, time. of course. It's I mean, the first of time. course. Now we see that all the time with having the two analog, st yeah. analog sticks. But also, you can say they continue to have solder buttons like the Super wow, NES controller. Yes, 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 very interesting. And the most, uh, you know, the funny stuff about this is that all the unit is powered from these six indeed, batteries. Indeed, indeed. And here, place, yeah. Indeed, here, here, are where the batteries go in. Hmm, very interesting. So, I mean, I would suspect that the the batteries or the uh, the, the, power, the part that takes the power supply would be on the main unit, not on the controller, but this yeah, is strange. Yeah, that's a bit fun. And mm. also, we can see, yeah, yeah. the cord is uh, too short. The cord is too short. Well, of course, I mean, you know, you, how could you go further away? You have to put the whole unit into your face. Yeah, and so uh, that I can make say sense. also that the, the output, the plug output, is very similar, or no, to the NES yes, controller exactly. ports. Yeah. Wow. Wow, well, yes. yes. Quite similar, yeah. Okay, uh, yes. that's your own palm. Okay, right. <laughs> Feel it too. Yes, it's really nice. Okay, so let's continue. Let's continue. So what else do we have over here? I think that we can open the main unit at the end. Oh, right. Let's see the folding plan. Okay, let's move this aside. Yeah. It smells new. That's the, the greatest pleasure of a collector owning a uh, you know, a piece like this, it's always these smells, the retro smells that I call Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, the build quality here is, uh, you know, much better than the controller pad. Mm -hmm. What's that? It's sturdy, the, yeah. The weight to it. Oh, it, it's like metal. This is like uh, metal. Yeah, this is really good, actually. Yeah, it's metal. Uh, good quality here also. Which makes sense because, I mean, since you're going to be putting that main unit on it, you want this to you be sturdy. something strong, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Very nice. Nintendo and having the brand, Nintendo logo yeah. over here. Hmm. Okay, very nice, very nice. And now, the main unit? Yes. Uh, no, you are going to open this. Me? It's your piece, yes. Okay, thank you very much, Nico. <laughs> oh. Welcome. Wow. I am so excited for this. Okay, so what do we have over here? First of all, it has this protective. Okay, Got that's going to be removed. And uh, alrighty, here's the uh, slider. The this focus. is for the focus. It even yeah. says it over here. Focus. This is the IPD. So th what this does is that it, just like in the binoculars, when you put when you put your binoculars on, yeah. and you kind of adjust 
the distance of yeah. the lens. That's mm -hmm. exactly what that does over here. Uh, what else do we see? We this protective the foam. foam around the eyes. Yes, uh, brand new, of course. This, after some years of being you of usage, you yeah. know, deteriorates and just it gets destroyed. Yeah. Uh, funny concept over here. Hotline. We have the hotline. <laughs> a yes. Nintendo logo inside. Oh yes, the yeah. Nintendo logo. So it can be stuck onto your forehead, right? After yeah. playing for a few hours. Yeah. That's very funny. Uh, you know what? I like this design. Like, it's look, 90s, look at this, look but at this. Uh, it looks very, uh, from the future. <laughs> very futuristic. You know, really, I, I think this the design is very impressive. So over here we have the port yeah. for the controller. Here's an extension. There's an external port for maybe for connecting to CRT's back of the time, mm. but probably they never uh, designed uh, yes. a cord like this. Yes, I it was bet. never designed. Yeah. Well, here is the uh, the entrance for the the, the, the game cartridge. Yeah. Exactly. Here we have some the headphone jack and the volume. The volume. And uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, we can see. Yes, the same from the same side. Oh sides. yes, yes. Rubber. This is rubber. The Nintendo logo yeah. and rubber, right? Both sides. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know why. Probably holding this with your hands oh, <laughs> when you are not going to play. Just yes, perhaps. <laughs> staring at the games after dizzy and uh, gameplay. <laughs> let's try to uh, put it together. Uh, here we go. I think I have it. Although this is my first attempt, I must admit. Unless I'm putting it on the yes, I'm putting it backwards. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. We are noobs with Virtual Boy. Yes. Well, this just comes to proof. Oops. Oh. There we go. Hurt. Okay. So uh, here it has the adjustable <laughs> to uh, make it go up and down. Nice. Very, very interesting. Very interesting concept. Okay. So. Uh, it seems very, very. Uh, futuristic and the build quality overall is very good. Mm -hmm. You can't expect less from Nintendo back in uh, the 90s. Uh, it's a piece that I want to add to my collection. It's one of the two, three you consoles. You will very soon. I'm sure. <laughs> I don't own, but I really want to. Although it's a failure, it still, remain, it still remains a piece of exactly. the game history. Exactly. Yeah. So let's power up this bad boy. So it's high time to put this collaboration of Nintendo and Duracell to the test <laughs> and let's go on to the next uh, part of our video. So Nick, you've been playing for about 20 minutes, right? Yeah. You've been playing Mario Tennis. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you even won a couple sets. So I want you to tell me your honest opinion about the uh, dizziness, first of all. Yeah. How does that feel? The gameplay itself. And the 3D perspective perception, is it realistic? I want to hear your opinion about this. Okay. Focus, focus, okay, <laughs> right. First of all, I have to admit that uh, this is, uh, remembers me exactly, you know, when a gunner inside a battle tank, you know, is ready yes. while, while he's targeting the enemy tanks, uh, etc. inside of this uh, scope. It uh, feels very similar to, you know, military equipment about targeting, <laughs> I don't know, maybe there are, uh, there are too many similarities with, you know, military stuff. But right now, uh, I have to admit that I thought it would be very, very, or, or far worse than what I expected. Okay. Yeah. It's nice. It's good. I don't know. I thought that I had, uh, maybe I had headaches. But I'm really nice. So I don't have any dizziness, you know. Those are mostly rumors, yeah, perhaps. Yeah. So it's very important to not rely, uh, you know, in opinions where some people they use to blame something because they don't like the brand, they don't like the product. Haters. Haters. Okay. <laughs> Directly, correct. So right now, although myself always believed that Virtual Boy is a very failed uh, console. Now, all my opinion from all of these years starts to, you know, to demolish. <laughs> okay. You know, and considering also the history of it. Yeah. And we put that package, package that together, the history. Yes. The gameplay. Uh, indeed, you know, for me, myself too, I feel kind of different um, for this um, console. Yeah. Now, I have one more question for you. So, so do you think you can uh, imagine yourself playing another game like, for instance, 
a Zelda game? Like, could you play Link's Awakening, which was on the mm. Game Boy, on uh, the Virtual Boy? Well, no, no okay. way. Maybe it's uh, probably not too difficult, uh, unimaginable. <laughs> I oh. don't know. Uh, it's for casual gameplay for players, just to play something for 30 minutes or maximum per one hour. Talk. Okay, all right. I really can't think myself to play a long game, a long safe adventure future, game. Yeah, an RPG game. It seems to be too hard. Uh, not only for your eyes, but also for your position, the body you know, posture, yeah, the body posture, etc. Mm. It seems a bit difficult, but now regarding your question about the 2D stereoscopic or 3D, yes, name yes. it as you want. <laughs> uh, I'm really impressed. Yeah, so it really feels like there's a 3D yeah. distance. From this technology back then of 1994 that exactly, they started yes. to invent it, uh, it seems uh, very different. It's something very too different from the common styles of all this technology that they wanted for the future to be released, etc. It seems promising, although it failed. Mm. It seems it was nice. Promising. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, yeah. When I played before the Telero Boxer game, mm -hmm. uh, the perspective yes. uh, it was too real. There was a very, you know, real distance about the enemy and mm -hmm. the, the point of view. So of although my it's two D sprites. Yeah. Because of the mirrors moving, whatever how that thing operates, yeah. it gives you the impression that there's depth. The depth, yeah. And there's that it's actually 3D. Wow. Exactly. It's not a a fake. Probably it's a fake 2D system, <laughs> but uh, it seems 3D. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So in that regards, they, it was successful as a machine. Yeah. It did uh, deliver what it promised. Let that, me close up. Yes. So. It, <laughs> it did deliver what it promised to, uh, to be a 3D. Um, gaming system. Yeah. Okay, so uh, thank you very much, first of all, for having me on your channel. Uh, My it, pleasure. <laughs> I'm very honored because you know you're a well-known channel here in Greece, uh, and I'm looking forward. To, you said that in your next project you have something with Sega, so yeah. I wonder what that is, and that's also brand new in box and news and everything. It's a uh, yes uh, with sealed contents that maybe I will decide to open it just for my audience, just for the episode. I don't know for sure exactly okay. to tell you, but uh, maybe for the reasons of the episode, maybe I'll go okay. for uh, you know unsealing all the products inside. Uh, finally, I just wanted to say again that. When Dennis told me that he bought a virtual boy in this pristine condition, I thought that I had I was obliged to show this this console to the audience, not only in my Greek audience but also in foreign audience. A lot of people I think in the States they will really like our episode. That's my opinion. I hope that they will uh, like <laughs> Of course they will. I mean yeah. It's a brand new machine being unboxed. It's part of the history, and That's uh, it, yeah. and you know we had we had a little bit of space of our personalities in here. So yes, of course. It's something that you can't see every day on YouTube. Yes. It's something uh, rare that we wanted to take the opportunity and to make this video uh, just for you. And I think that you are going to like it if you want to subscribe to my channel. Yes, everybody, like and subscribe and. <laughs> into Nick's channel, especially since more content is coming in in, these, in brand new, uh, unused, sealed uh, gaming history consoles. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to this. And he definitely uh, needs the um, uh, the support because he puts a lot of quality into his ah, videos. Okay. I mean, although <laughs> the past videos are all in Greek, uh, they're all very of high quality and a lot of effort. So Nick, again, thank you very much, sir. Thank you it too. Nice thank to you, be here. Sir. Thank you. Thank you all of you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed that. And okay, Take see you care, next everybody. time. Keep it ready, guys. Bye bye.